Bionicle 2 Legends of Metro Nui is a 2004 direct to video science fantasy action film and the second film based on Lego's Bionicle toy line. It is a prequel to the first film, Bionicle Mask of Light. This movie follows the 2004 storyline and was created using Lego elements from the Bionicle series. It is also the second of the two films in the franchise to be given a rating by the MPAA. It was released on DVD and VHS on October 19, 2004. In this movie, Vakama recalls events that took place long before the classic Bionicle stories at Mata Nui, during which he, along with his friends Nuju, Matau, Wanwa, Fanua, and Nokama were chosen to be the new Toa of the island of Metru Nui. To save the city, they must prove themselves worthy Toa, find their mask powers, and protect the heart of Metru Nui. However, they also find themselves caught up in the schemes of the evil Makuta. The film has many scenes taking stock footage from itself. The film was received with mixed reviews, with some noting the filling in of plot holes from the last movie. The series continued to be noted for its visual effects and musical score. It was followed by a sequel, Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows. Topic. Plot The film begins with Turaga Vakama describing a land that existed before Mata Nui called Metru Nui, where the local Toa were falling in battle as a relentless shadow sought to conquer the great city. Lakan, the last remaining Toa, travels throughout the entire city, giving Toa stones to six Mataran, Fanua, Nuju, Matau, Wanwa, Nokama, and Vakama. After giving the last stone to Vakama, Lakan is captured by two dark hunters, Nidiki and Kreka. Vakama later meets the other Mataran at the Great Temple in Ga Metru, there, they are transformed into six new Toa. After Vakama has a vision, they all set out to recover the six great discs hidden throughout Metru Nui, hoping to prove to Turaga Doom, the city's leader, that they are worthy Toa. However, Doom issues that small gifts will not confirm them as Toa, and puts them to a grueling test instead. When the six fail to pass, Doom denounces them as imposters and unleashes the Vaki, the city's law enforcers, upon them. In the ensuing chaos, Wanwa, Nuju, and Fanua are captured while Vakama and the others escape the Colosseum by leaping into a chute system, with the Dark Hunters giving chase. Vakama, Nokama, and Matau abandon the chute system at Ko Metru when the Dark Hunters get the flow reversed and set out to find the other Toa and Lakan, whom Vakama believes is still alive. They hitch a ride on a Vaki transport to Po Metru, where are ambushed by the Dark Hunters and flee from a herd of Kikanalo beasts. Nokama discovers that her mask allows her to speak and understand foreign languages and persuades the Kikanalo to help them find Lakan. Matau discovers his mask power, shape shifting, along the way. Meanwhile, Wanwa, Fanua, and Nuju are trying unsuccessfully to escape when are approached by a mysterious Turaga, who explains that Toa mask powers are needed to escape and teaches them how to activate them. Growing impatient, the Toa argue until Wanue's mind control and Nuju's telekinesis mask powers activate, and Nuju uses his to create an escape route. Fanua then discovers his mask power, night vision, before the four reunite with Vakama, Nokama, and Matau. The Turaga then reveals himself to be Lakan, who sacrificed his power to turn Vakama and company into Toa. He inquires as to the safety of the heart of Metru Nui, which Vakama believed was Lakan himself, but is actually the Mataran. Vakama then discovers a small canister that contains Doom. The Doom from before was an imposter. Pursued by the Vaki, the Toa, along with Lakan, set out to stop the False Doom, who has summoned the Mataran to the Colosseum to be placed in canisters to sleep. The False Doom reveals himself to be Makuta in disguise, and plunges the great spirit Mata Nui into slumber. The Toa gather as many Mataran capsules as they can in race to escape the crumbling city. On the way out, the Dark Hunters attack them again, but are killed, along with a Navak, Makuta's spy, when Makuta absorbs them. 
As the group leaves Metro Nui, Vakama creates the legendary Mask of Time, which he unsuccessfully tried to do as a Madarin. From the Great Discs, Makuta pursues and in the ensuing battle, Lakan is killed protecting Vakama. In an anguished rage, Vakama knocks the Mask of Time into the sea and defeats Makuta in combat using his newfound concealment mask power. The Toa combine their powers to seal Makuta in a protodermis prison and move on to the surface, emerging on an island they name Mata Nui, in honor of the Great Spirit. There, they sacrifice their Toa power to awaken the Madarin and become Turaga. Vakama gives Likan's mask to an injured Madarin named Yalar, to the cheers of the other Madarin and Turaga, and their new lives on Mata Nui begin. Topic cast Alessandro Giuliani as Toa Vakama, the Toa of Fire, a former mask maker who sees prophetic visions of the future. Christopher Gaze as Taraga Vakama, the narrator, Gerard Plunkett as Taraga Doom, the leader of Metru Nui. Tabitha St. Germain as Toa Nokama, the Toa of Water, a former teacher who strives to do her duty. Michael Dobson as Toa, Taraga Lacan, a Toa of Fire and former guardian of Metru Nui and Kreka, a powerful but unintelligent dark hunter. Brian Drummond as Toa Matau, the Toa of Air, a light-hearted former test driver and Toa Wunwa, the Toa of Stone, a headstrong and independent former carver. Paul Dobson as Toa Fanua, the Toa of Earth with respect for the past and Nidiki, a former Toa turned dark hunter. Trevor Deval as Toa Nuju, the Toa of Ice with respect for the future. Ali Takar as Makuta, the main antagonist in Kongu, a matter in operating the shoots in Metru Nui. Topic. Production Plans were in place before the release of the first Bionicle movie to create a second movie. The directors Terry Shakespeare and David Molina did have some input into the storyline, though most of the mythology had already been sketched out. For the visual style of the film, director David Molina stated, We wanted to give this audience a bigger view of the Bionicle world, more environments, larger vistas. Also, the island of Bionicle 2 is something like Manhattan, with lots of commerce and large buildings. The first film was very intimate, very organic. Metro Nui is more mechanical, so it has a different feel. Talking about the camera work, director Terry Shakespeare said, We really concentrated on depth of field with the camera. Comparing the two Bionicles, he felt, The first film had primary colors that were coded to the areas and a younger feel. For Bionicle 2, we opened it up, the palette had to be more sophisticated, more realistic with earth tones, so we desaturated the characters. Most of the animation was created in Taiwan by a company called CGCG. The process of creating the movie, from storyboarding to delivery of the film took 12 months. Melina additionally added that the pipeline and process for creating this film was faster and more refined than the original Bionicle movie. Our strength is bringing characters to life and not just robots, added Shakespeare. Topic. Soundtrack Nathan First, composer of the first film soundtrack, returned to score Legends of Metru Nui. In place of the tribal elements used in Mask of Light, First integrated electronic and techno sounds into the second film's music to accommodate its futuristic style. The Legends of Metru Nui score was released as a digital album on December 12, 2017, 13 years after the film's release. Unlike the Mask of Light and Web of Shadow soundtracks which contain the complete scores from their respective films, this release contains most of the Legends of Metru Nui score while omitting music from some scenes. First stated that two tracks were excluded on purpose due to their redundancy and because they would have disrupted the flow of the album, though he has also said that he plans to distribute them, this release includes two bonus tracks. The first is an alternate. Desert, Kaikinalo, 
theme that was unused in the film, while the second is First's original sketch for Lickin's theme which was used partially in the film's DVD menus and incorporated into the score at various moments featuring the character. The soundtrack's initial lack of availability was partially due to it being lost in a hard drive crash for several years, as First stated multiple times. Prior to the 2017 release, First revealed that the entire score was eventually recovered thanks to his assistant. Topic. Reception Cartoon Network's Toonami aired several scenes from the film along with the first Bionicle movie Mask of Light. The film was first screened on October 6, 2004, at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood, California. Cartoon Network aired the movie for the first time less than two months after its release on December 18, 2004, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, though reviewers were still skeptical as to the toy promotional nature of these films, several noted their marked improvement over the original Bionicle movie, including its filling in of major plot holes that had been present in the first film. It was also noted for its references to The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, The Matrix, and Excalibur. There was concern that the Bionicle brand promoted violence, running counter to the Lego themes of patience and careful construction. A sequel entitled Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows was released in 2005. Bionicle 2 was nominated at the DVD Exclusive Awards for Best Animated Premiere Movie. It was also nominated for Best Director and Best Original Score. Bionicle was nominated at the 32nd Annual Saturn Awards for Best DVD Release. It was also an eParenting Media Award winner for Best Home Video, DVD. Two awards were won by the studio that created Bionicle 2 at the 27th Annual Telly Awards. It also won the Golden Reel Award for Sound Editing in a direct-to-video release. Topic. DVD release Bionicle 2, Legends of Metru Nui was released on DVD on October 6, 2004 in the United States. The DVD included a number of documentaries including the making of the movie and associated toy line. There is also a featurette entitled, The Legend Revealed, that has a brief question and answer session with the production team. Some critics were concerned that the DVD makes too much of an attempt to sell the Bionicle product. 